and we will go. Uh, I'm sure audiences will remember uh, Jennifer Pedham's previous films, such as Sherpa and Mountain, such uh, distinctive uh, films. And now Jennifer has uh, made a new film called River, and it's my great pleasure to be speaking to Jennifer. Jennifer, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Thanks for having me, Peter. Good to talk to you again. I know it was quite a while ago. I think I spoke to you last about Sherpa going back a number of years. Anyway, tell me about the journey you've taken to uh, make River such a, a distinctive, beautiful film. Yeah, well, I, I think to talk about River, we have to also talk about Mountain, which was its predecessor, um, which began life as a commission from the Australian Chamber Orchestra, um, which very much explains why the film is, is sort of like a concert film, if you like. So with Mountain um, was the first um, work I'd ever done like that. And, and I guess it's to say that it exists both as a concert um, with the Australian Chamber Orchestra performing it live, as well as a standalone cinema um, event, if you like. And, um, and it, the success of Mountain really surprised all of us. It, it was ended up becoming a real box office hit. Um, and it had been such a, a, an interesting and wonderful collaboration with a number of great artists that, that we decided that we'd like to go again. And, um, and so we, we decided to tell the story of Rivers. Um, and, um, you know, Rivers, it, it's, the film is, is similar in many ways in, in, in its structure and its format, but it is designed for live performance as well. You know, there are not a lot of talking heads. It is about epic cinematography, incredible music, and, and then this beautiful spare narration script that's written by the British author Robert McFarlane um, and voiced so beautifully um, by Willem Dafoe. Um, so it is, it's, um, I think it's, it's the kind of film that it is, it is like going into a concert. It's, it's uh, like a piece of event cinema and it definitely warrants being seen um, on a big screen because the cinematography is, is really um, special. Absolutely special and it definitely deserves to be seen in a cinema um, for the visuals as well as for the, for the music, etc. So uh, Jennifer, I'm quite intrigued. How did you decide on the locations in terms of these wonderful rivers and water and so on that you uh, have photographed, including some fantastic drone photography as well? <laughs> yeah, it, it um, you know, in the years between mountain and river, the, the, the kind of standard and quality and technology of drones, but also the standard and quality of drone operation had really taken a massive leap. And so... Um, part of that was was researching um, with the co-director Joseph Mazzetti um, going out to, to the entire world really and looking at who was doing the most amazing drone cinematography um, and um, you know we reached out to a number of those people um, and um, you know it's, it's probably important to note that the, this film began pre-production the week of the first lockdowns um, in Sydney and that obviously really affected how we went on to make the film. Um, if you've seen mountain, you know that we don't ever look at any one mountain and likewise in river, we don't look at any one river. We, we, we were driven by the cinematography, we were driven by, um, you know, there are certain places where rivers just do incredible things um, and, and at different points in the story, we needed rivers doing those different things and also including you can't tell the story of rivers these days without telling the story of dams. Um, and so the story dictated where we went, um, which ended up being, I think we collected cinematography from 34 different countries around the world, including from space and from satellite. There's quite mm. a few long um, sequences of time-lapse cinematography that show the impact of, um, of um, human presence and use of water on on Earth from space, which is is quite remarkable and really can't be told in any other way. Those shots are absolutely superb, and, and in fact, it, it, the whole film is uh, has such a, a beautiful journey in itself, uh, which which I found so magnificent. Um, so I'm I'm quite intrigued as to the music as well, and I know that. Uh, 
Johnny Greenwood, for example, and Radiohead, etc. But Johnny Greenwood, who of course did the score for Power of the Dog, um, he was a, a great get in many respects. How did all of that come about? <laughs> so how how that came about was that um, again, thanks to the Australian Chamber Orchestra, um, Richard Tongetti, the artistic director of the ACO, um, had a number of years earlier. Um, commissioned a work by Johnny Greenwood. I think he'd come out, he was ready ahead to do a concert um, and they had met up and decided to, to work together. And the piece that um, they commissioned from Johnny was called Water. And so when it came to making River, um, Richard, who was also the musical director of this film, was very keen to, to use that. And of course, I was delighted um, to be able to have access to that extraordinary piece of composition that was, you know, specifically for the Australian Chamber Orchestra. Um, and so that was the first, um, that was the first step. And, and then um, we, um, we, there's a, a beautiful track from Radiohead in the film called Harry Patch. Um, and it was just perfect for the particular moment in the story. And um, I think, again, because of that relationship, that pre-existing relationship with Australian Chamber Orchestra, Johnny already being on board the project in that way, they, they were happy for us to, to license that particular cue, which is, you know, really amazing, a really amazing song. Absolutely. No, the music is, is, is absolutely superb. Uh, um, tell me about Willem Dafoe, because uh, he has such a distinctive voice. Um, mm -hmm. How did you decide to settle on him as the narrator? So again, he came. Um, he came with Mountain. So um, when I when I was finishing Mountain, everyone kept asking me who the narrator was going to be, and it it took me a long time to to decide because I didn't. I, it was really important to me that it not be a token decision, that it not be a token movie star, and was actually watching the Australian film um, The Hunter that um, that where Willem is uh, the lead role in this film um, set in in the wilds and mountains of Tasmania and and I just really needed to believe that whoever the narrator was a believed the words that he was saying and was interested in the ideas expressed but also you could imagine him in that environment um, and so he was the first and only person that we reached out to on Mountain and we were just very lucky that he connected to the material and he said yes. Um, and so then when it came to, to making River, um, again, I delayed making a decision for a long time because I wondered if we should go with a different narrator, but in the end, it just, it felt right. And, um, and Willem was able to sort of, um, you know, transform from the craggy peaks in mountain to the voice of the river um, in river. And I think part of it is that he, um, he has such integrity as an artist. Um, his voice is incredibly grounded and has a, a, a wonderful quality to it, but it also is very unpretentious. And that was important with the words um, in this particular instance. It needed to feel... Um, uh, it needed to be able to go with the flow of the film and, and his voice just did that really beautifully. Great. Yeah, no, it really sounds good. I, I'm quite intrigued because this film was shot over six uh, continents and uh, the locations, etc., cetera, are, are quite magnificent. Were there any challenges uh, in terms of the locations that, that were used and of some of the photography or cinematography that was done? I mean... It's hard to shoot rivers really well, and it's hard to shoot rivers in drones because you can't necessarily have a line of sight. So, you know, we wanted lots of long shots tracking along rivers with drones, but you can't necessarily do that without having a line of sight from your, from your drone operator. So I think um, getting those particular shots of rivers was probably the biggest challenge. But, you know, it's re really all kind of kudos to the cinematographers that shot it and some of these amazing shots where they rig up, you know, lines over rivers looking down waterfalls and, and do all sorts of amazing things to get these shots as they did with Mountain, um, you know, dealing with the best in the world at, at shooting these kinds of um, things. And rivers are very different. They're, they're, they have different challenges to shooting them than the mountains do with 
mountaineering uh, with the, a lot of the footage in mountain that was really finding the best mountaineers in the world who happened to be incredible cinematographers. Um, there's really only a handful of people who can do that work. Um, and in the case of River, we had more people available to us because you don't necessarily need to be a mountaineer, but in some of these shots, um, really only certain people go to these places. And um, some of the most amazing shots are from places like Iceland and, um, and remote corners of the world. So you're dealing with people who love to be out in nature. Um, and what was lovely about the relationships we formed in, in finding these cinematographers was that a lot of them had seen mountain really like and were, were excited to be involved in in this work as a as a contributing cinematographer so there was a real willingness and openness and sense of kind of community to um the way that it all came together because we couldn't leave the country well, so, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah which is Good old COVID. probably the biggest challenge yeah. of course it is <laughs> fully understand um I'm, I'm interested too in in the way the story was put together or the script that willem uh, read um, and uh, there is an environmental theme uh, in subtext rather than uh, overlaying uh, the, the storyline or the narration. Uh, you must, you and Robert, I suppose, must have spent a fair bit of time fashioning that to, to get the flow of the story right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, myself, um, co-director, co-writer Joseph Mazzetti and Robert, and Robert, who we'd of course also worked with on Mountain, um, the difference between Mountain and River is that he had written a book um, that really expressed a lot of the ideas um, that I was interested in um, with Mountain. It was called Mountains of the Mind. In, in the case of River, I mean, he's written many wonderful books um, and most recently an amazing book called Underland, but he has not written specifically about rivers. Um, so it was, um, we never met in person on this project. We met only twice on Mountain. On River, it was all Zoom um, and it was lots of, um, you know, early mornings for him, late nights for us um, in talking through the structure, talking through what it was that we wanted to say, why we wanted to say it. He was, uh, he's, a, he's a real um, environmentalist, Robert, and um, really felt the sense of urgency um, here. And so that became, um, I think in many ways it is, um, it, it, it is a more environmental film. It does have a greater sense of urgency. I mean, rivers are far more vulnerable to a harm than, than mountains are. And, um, you know, there is a line in the film that probably encapsulates this best that says the sheer scale of the human project has begun to overwhelm the world's rivers. Um, and it really is the case because there's very few wild rivers left in the world. Um, you know, either left unspanned, undammed, or undiverted, or unpolluted, um, and it is is you know it really tells the story of um, you know of of that damage and, and what we really need to be doing to rectify it before it's too late. Because in the case of rivers, if if it is too late, I mean we we can't exist without clean running water and. Um, um, and it is always the, the most vulnerable that could suffer first. Um, and there are millions of people around the world who are not getting enough access to, to clean water. And there are massive damming infrastructure pro projects that are cutting off people's access to, to water. So the implications um, are great. But it does speak to the, the story of rivers is a metaphor as well for our relationship more generally with, with the environment. Oh, so I, yeah. I think we make the film to kind of inspire people to have an encounter with nature and to sit in be immersed in it and, and to think about it in a different way. Absolutely. And, and perhaps uh, to galvanise some people into action as well, which is, uh, would be a nice way of, uh, <laughs> of uh, having an impact uh, by a documentary. So Jennifer, when you work with Joseph Nassetti, how, how did you work together on fashioning the film? So Joseph actually um, worked, used to work for the Australian Chamber Orchestra. So he has actually a degree in musicology um, and worked for many years with, with the ACO. Um, and so that's how we first um, came into contact. Um, and he, he is also, what I learned in the process of, of making Mountain was that he's, um, 
you know, an aspiring young filmmaker and also, you know, one with a lot of talent, particularly in, in the area of, of writing, which is where we were working in. And, and so he'd come and worked for us part-time after Making Mountain on other projects that we were developing. Um, he's really great as a story consultant. Um, and we, we just have a really easy and, and productive working relationship. And when it came to, to making River, it made a lot of sense for him to take that step up in his career. But, you know, it was, it was mutual benefit to, to me because he also has this extraordinary technical background in music. Um, and so he was a really wonderful interface between the music side and the film side on the project um, because that the music has a bigger role in this movie than it would in, in your normal documentary, if you like. Um, and, and because he has such a great working relationship with Richard Tongetti and, and the ACO, he was, he was really able to help with that, but, but he's also a, a great storyteller. So it was, um, it was just, you know, a question of doing the work and who needed to do which bits. And, um, he did a lot of the research. He found a lot of these great young drawing cinematographers. He, you know, he had a tremendous contribution in many different ways to the film and to all aspects of it. Excellent stuff. And of course, uh, this is a very tight 75 minute documentary. So the editing process, because obviously you'd have much more footage than you ended up using, that must have been quite a process. <laughs> yeah, so so shout out to Simon Yo, our wonderful cinematographer, uh, cinematographer, our wonderful editor. Um, and also, um, we, we had a fantastic, because of that first thing you mentioned, the volume of material that we had was so immense. Um, we worked with a really talented young editor, um, Christine, um, who, um, Christine Chung, who um, it worked right up until assembly point and then when Simon was ready to come in, which just meant that he was able to come in with fresh eyes at a certain point because I learnt um, Christian Dazal, my wonderful Sherpa editor who also edited Mountain, and I learnt the hard way that an editor can drown in too much material. And so there is real value in, in keeping fresh eyes of an editor, I believe. And I, I, I've used that process and a number of the other films I've made where you get the film to a certain point. Um, and, and also for the director in, in documentary, the process of writing is often also in the edit. Um, and I don't believe in the process of just chucking a bunch of rushes at the editor and hoping a film will pop out at the end. I really think that the director needs to take responsibility for being the storyteller and getting to a certain point first, then really utilising the artistry of that editor in, the, in, in to the greatest effect. Um, and Simon is, is just a, an incredible editor. It was just such a joy to, to work with. It was a really great experience. Oh, terrific. Well, it, it's great to see River releasing in cinemas um, very shortly. And I'm really interested to know, Jennifer, what your next project might be. Yeah, well, we do have a, um, a we love the idea of doing a trilogy with these films, but the third one will certainly be a fair way off as River was a fair gap between uh, River and Mountain. But um, I'm currently producing two, um, <coughs> excuse me, two feature docs with young, fantastic, talented directors through my production company in Sydney um, and my own uh, next directing project, I hope, will be the feature, feature drama um, about Tenzing Norgo, who was the first person to climb Everest with Edmund Hillary. So that's a drama project that's um, currently in kind of early stages of well, late stages of development, early stages of pre-production. So um, the slow moving base, these feature films. So um, we'll see what happens next. Absolutely. Look forward to all of those projects. They sound uh, terrific. Um, we've been speaking to Jennifer Pedham, the uh, director of River, uh, releasing in Australian cinemas this month. Jennifer, it's been a pleasure talking to you. You too, Peter. Thanks for having me on. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.